welcome to my channel. Thank you for tuning into this video on construction of a thickness sander. After I built a few string instruments, I noticed there were parts of the process that took longer than others and that could really facilitate the process. If there was a tool that could do these specific jobs. For me, that was uh, getting the correct thickness on the tops, the sides, uh, and the back of guitar or ukulele bodies. And so I looked at a bunch of different videos on what was out there and who had made thickness sanders. And they really varied everything from quite simple to very complex with some electronic circuitry that uh, was fairly expensive and uh, complicated. Uh, but for me, I was looking for three things in the sander. I wanted it to be stable so that it wasn't going to move around when the drum was spinning. The drum spins at about 1700 RPM. Uh, I also wanted a feed table. I didn't want it to re reach across the drum to feed the piece of wood through the sander. And I also wanted to be able to feed it at a constant rate so you didn't get warbles in the wood from stopping it uh, part way through. Uh, and then uh, Last thing, uh, I wanted a lift mechanism that was simple, but that was going to be very accurate and, and stable. It wasn't going to move while the machine was running. Um, so I look at these videos, and you'll, you'll notice as you go through this, this is mostly based on a design that you'll see uh, from Chris at Highline Guitar. So I want to thank Chris for sharing the information that he did uh, on his. Also another one that uh, I used was Stumpy Nubs. He had built a, a thickness sander and there were some others too, uh, but what I will do, I will put the links to those down below and uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, do this, this in a series of videos uh, so it doesn't get too long and what I'll show you how to do each piece in the process. I'll start out by showing you how I made this uh, feed table. Uh, but even if you don't want to have a feed table, uh, I would say go ahead and subscribe so you can see the rest of the process. You'll see how I built the frame, uh, the motor mount, and uh, the lift table, and all the rest of it. And, and you can look at the videos that I link and you can see what would meet uh, your needs. And uh, then uh, let me know in your comments what you think. So thanks for tuning in and I'll get started on the process. I first cut out all the pieces I would need for the feed table. The table itself is 25 inches wide, 24 inches deep, and an inch and a half thick. I also needed rails for the side, and those would hold the rollers. And I uh, also needed several other pieces, and these pieces would be used to create a tensioning mechanism on uh, each corner of the table. Next, I cut a dado in the rails. As I wanted those to be able to attach squarely and firmly to the side of the table. I used flange bearings to hold the rollers, but in order to do that, I had to have a way to put tension on those rollers. So I decided to make a slat in the rail so that I could adjust the flange bearings. And the bearing would move along the rail where I made the slat. I put a guide on my drill press and marked the beginning and the end of the slat and drilled those initial holes to mark out the location of the slat on the rail.
And then to finish it off, I use my rotor table to clean out the slot so that the tensioning mechanism would move fairly smoothly. The next step was to drill a hole in each of the four blocks that would be used to create the tensioning mechanism. I will attach the flange bearings to these blocks and then use a threaded rod in this hole on the side to allow you to adjust it to create the tension. So then I mark the location of each of the holes for the flange bearing and drilled the holes to get ready so that I could attach them to the side. Um, these blocks will attach through the rail and they'll, they'll be able to slide in the slot that was created in the side of the rail. I then mark the center of the board and the location of some pilot holes so I could attach that board to the rail. Now this would be the, the other part of the tensioner. So I, uh, I just held them in place on the side and drilled pilot holes. The rails are actually made of oak and so I needed to drill pilot holes. Uh, and then I just used some deck screws to attach the, that board to the rail. I then cut four pieces of thread rod that I would use to tension the rollers. I put the three nuts on there ahead of time so I wouldn't have to worry about the damage from the sawing the threads. And I took the block that he made previously and inserted one in into the sliding block and then the other end into that stationary part of the tensioner that I attached the rails. And I took the half inch uh, steel rod that would be used for the rollers and fed that through there. And then it was time to attach the flange bearings. So those went through the back slot and through the front hole and into the uh, flange bearing. And I had to make sure those all lined up properly. Those will be tightened completely once the roller is adjusted, but in the meantime, uh, on the outside of the block, on the sliding end, I put two screws, and then what I did is I tightened, again, tightened them against each other. They will stay in place, and the other end, uh, on the stationary part of the roller uh, of black that will be used when we go to adjust the tension on the rollers. The two rollers are made of inch and a half PVC pipe and I cut those to length on the miter saw. And then I cut out uh, four spacers that would go in each end of the two rollers. And that was so they would slide on to the half inch rod. And here's the roller put together. You, you can see the 
in there the plug that was in the roller and I wanted to drill a hole and put a pin through there so that they would not spin when the rollers were turning. So in each end, I drilled the hole through the wooden plug and then through the steel rod. So I wouldn't have to worry about them turning. To make the pin, I just took a screw and kind of filed off the threads on it some, and then just tapped it through with the, with the hammer. Of course, the feed belt goes over the rollers, and since the PVC is fairly slippery, I needed some way to create some traction so it would uh, drive the belt. I've seen several methods people have used to do this somehow put have wrap uh, like rubber inner tube around the roller but in this case uh, I had some flex seal and I'd use it for other things and you know I, just to set the record straight I'm not getting compensated by flex seal but uh, that stuff is amazing and so I use that to coat the rollers and so I put a couple coats of the flex seal on there after the rollers dried then it was time to set them into the frame. I had to do this one side at a time. So I got the rollers in the bearings. Then actually stood the whole frame on the ground and the track is actually a 60 grit sandpaper belt and you have to put it on of course one side at a time and so then I slipped that down over the rollers and you know of course all that is, ta is attached to the feed table and it's now all fully adjustable. So I got the one side on. Now that the belt is over the rollers, we can put the other rail on the other side of the feed table. This gives you a little better idea exactly how it works. You can see the shaft from the rollers coming through the rail and then the slots in the top where the bearing will create the tension. And you put this on uh, exactly the way it was put on the other side, putting on the rail first, then we'll put on the uh, tension adjuster. And if you were like me, most of the videos that you looked at talked about not using a feed table because they do add a, le a level of complexity. And honestly, they do. It, as you can see, this wasn't the easiest thing to put together, but to me, it was really worth it to be able to have the ability to feed this through at a constant rate of speed. You can see that the one shaft from the roller is longer. I'm going to put a handle on that shaft and maybe eventually even a conveyor motor, but to start out with, I'll put a crank on there so I can turn up my hand. And then just exactly the way we did it on the other side, we pre-drilled the holes for putting on the tensioner. And in this case, we, you know, we've, we've got to go over both of the roller shafts. So you have to put it all together before you attach it or there's not enough space to get the tensioner on unless you do it. well before it's all hooked together.
And the next thing we'll do here is we'll tr put through the bolts so they can attach the uh, flange bearings. Now you you don't actually tighten those down all the way until you actually get the tension adjusted. So I'm just going to put the bearings on and loosely put on the nuts and bolts and then we'll adjust the tension and then we'll lock down the flange bearing. So we're get, getting close to having it ready to go here. Now they've got the other rail put together, we'll use the Allen wrench to tighten the set screws onto the roller shaft. And as you can see, if you decide to build a feed table, it does add a level of complexity as well. It, and that's why some decided not to. But before we tighten the bolts on the bearing, we'll go ahead and uh, adjust the tension. What I did is I went from side to side back and forth and just tighten them a little each time and made sure that the rollers were parallel and they were tracking straight across the uh, table. And then you can go ahead and tighten the bolts. And uh, even if you decide not to build a feed table, I hope that some of the things you've seen here can help you with some something else in this project or any other project that you're working on. So if uh, you're interested in watching the rest of the build for this sander, go ahead and subscribe and you'll see some upcoming videos very soon.